We have to buy help me with hip hop. <laughs> Only to say have a page that says it is not hip hop. <laughs> yeah. You've misspelled it. Click here to redirect to the correct <laughs> spelling. You're listening to the Help Me with Hip Hop podcast, where hip hop and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax. Hippa help is on the way. Welcome to episode 308 of the Hippa Podcast. My name is David Sims, Hippa for MSPs and Security First IT. And joining me is Donna Grimlin Card. And yes, I do talk fast. <laughs> <laughs> like, where did that come from? Because we've just been carrying on a conversation and then you ripped that one off. <laughs> Every time I do the opener quick, I always, for some reason, think about Krista and the software and how it won't catch my words because I speed through that piece. <laughs> that that would be Elizabeth. Elizabeth and does that piece? Yes. Oh, poor you Elizabeth. You can't keep up with who's in charge of what anymore. Nope. I, I don't. So <laughs> you're just throwing stuff everywhere. Do this, do this, do this, do this. <laughs> it's, it's survival, man. It's survival. <laughs> uh, all right. So t- today we're going to be talking about maturity models matter. The irony is not lost on us. <laughs> I know. I mean, we take maturity seriously on this podcast. <laughs> uh, but before we get into today's show, we do want to talk about the HIPAA boot camp because yeah. it is um, it's almost full. <laughs> well, like, technically, we're, we're at the point where we have to decide because we have the what we consider, okay, this is the target number. We have more than that confirmed already. We have one more than that confirmed. So if you want in, we may start waitlisting people. We've, we've never been full like this two, over two months out. So mm-hmm. maybe somebody will drop out and if you're interested in being waitlisted or trying to get, I mean, we might. I if, might you pay, be, if you pay double, we'll push somebody out. <laughs> uh, that's great i love it <laughs> now, david is your your the the one chick in the nest that you everybody's afraid of <laughs> but yes we um uh we're excited it's quite an eclectic group and uh we're looking forward to uh talking with everybody so we'll see if you're interested though you should probably send us an email Right now, you could still sign up, but it won't be long before we'll say you can't sign up. You need to wait list. So yeah, the boat's almost full. We're starting to take on water. <laughs> 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 yeah, I gotta do. I gotta do some math and and decide because you know if we have it gets down to not just the number of people, but the number of organizations, and some bring multiple people, and so I gotta do some math to decide how many more, but. We're at that point, and um, we're excited about that. Mm-hmm. I think it's awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. If All you're right, signed so- up, yay, team. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, so, a uh, great idea for everybody. How about sharing the podcast with somebody this week? Yeah. Do that. Yeah, say something nice <laughs> say about say me. Something nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and also a reminder, if you don't know, we, we do post the videos of our podcast on, on YouTube now. So, uh, I haven't, no, haven't mentioned that in a few weeks, but yeah, if you want to see our crazy facial expressions as we <laughs> record the podcast, we do record the video part of it. So, yeah, well, now I get those pictures of weird <laughs> pop where David pauses it and there's stupid looks on my face and I just get a, a text message with a picture. You know, there's a story behind that. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how it started, but me and when they, you know, when they started having it where you could pause live TV, mm-hmm. you know, for us, I was like, oh my gosh, you could pause live TV. That's yeah, so I crazy. remember that. <laughs> but, Still do. Ooh, bad but, pause. <laughs> I know. So my wife and I, apparently we were like super bored one night. And, and so we just would sit there and just keep pausing the TV to catch the stupidest faces. <laughs> And then we would take a picture of it with our phone and send it to people. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and so 
uh, as I'm editing these videos down, if I catch Donna with a crazy face, I'll snapshot it and send it to her. <laughs> it's awesome. So, yeah, it's, it's the thing we do down here to entertain ourselves. It's like, look at this stupid face I made. <laughs> uh, all right. So thanks again to our donors. We definitely appreciate your support. If you want to support this podcast, head on over to helpmewithhippa.com and you can donate there. Help keep the lights on. Because <laughs> we need right. that. Yeah. And we got an email from uh, Andrea or Andrea, depending on how fancy you are. <laughs> <laughs> and it reads, hi, double D's. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Your I told you so phrase should be double D done told y'all. <laughs> DD done told y'all. <laughs> yeah. DD done told y'all. Tuntola. Love your show. Best regards, Andrea. Andrea. <laughs> yeah, whatever it is, if you're fancy. But we appreciate that, that. And I was like, yeah, we did ask if anybody had some good ideas. So then I remembered another listener who gave us the phrase, knock me down and steal my teeth, which is <laughs> still one of my most favorite moments. So I think that we, uh, I propose that we mix them together and we have well, knock me down and steal my teeth. Double D done told y'all. <laughs> you gonna mix them together? <laughs> I'm gonna mix them together so that we can have, you know, I told you so. It's just so mundane for us. Mm -hmm. You know, so next time we have something, we're gonna use that. I think we're gonna have to work on it. Maybe we'll get something that goes with David's board so that we can have something like Hippa Say What? Yeah. Hippa Say What? Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to get somebody to record Knock Me Down and Steal My Teeth Double D done told y'all <laughs> <laughs> We could do that We could definitely do that <laughs> we get your wife to record it for us oh, I'll be yeah. perfect <laughs> What we ought to do We need to do a push for our listeners To do an opening to the show Yeah, like, yeah. My name is David and out of whatever, South Carolina, because that's where I'm at. <laughs> and you're listening to the Helping with Hippo podcast. And then we'll just start putting listeners at the beginning of the show. Yeah, because we so, need some new ones. We used um, to record them when we did the uh, boot camps in person. Yeah. And we haven't been able to do that now in years, literally, in a couple yeah. of years. Yeah. So, so I'll, I'll see if I can find a way to, to put some type of instructions together or something on the website to do it used to, you you know, it was, it was a technology challenge, but nowadays you can just pick up your phone and just record an audio voice and send it in an email. So it's not that difficult to do, but um, I'll see if I can come up with a way to make it easier for people to do that. I'd love to have some of our listeners to, to open the show for us. Yeah. It's yeah. We're due. We're due with new. We're due for new. <laughs> so if you want to be the new, hook us up. Yep. So um, as of right now, I don't have anything else to say about that. <laughs> you can email me idea. if you want. Yeah, it's an idea. It just come up. So um, so I don't have a, a site to send you to or anything, but, um, but I'm going to put something together because i like to give our listeners an opportunity to do that. All right. There we go. All right. Ready for? Yeah, let's do it. You ready? Yep. All right. You do it. Hip up. Say what? There you go. <laughs> All right, so we're going to uh, do a follow-up on the status of the scripts attack. And if you join us a few episodes back, we did uh, somewhat of a live play-by-play -play <laughs> of a cyber attack on uh, scripts healthcare out in California. Uh, and it was... Wow. It was a play-by-play -play of how the discussions on social media by their patients. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were reading them as they were coming in and... I, yeah. I, it was very um, educational. It was the most somber show we've ever had. <laughs> I know. I felt so tight. You know, it was very trying when you read how those people were feeling. Mm -hmm. So but the good news is they're 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 beyond that. They're improving now. This attack began May first. I want to say. And here we are recording this on June 6th. So a month later, they're still trying to recover. And they've started 
notifying patients, and they say they're notifying 147,000 patients. The good news is it's not all their patients. Mm -hmm. The good news is they didn't get into the, didn't get an exfiltrate data from the EHR. Mm -hmm. This is just other stuff. Yeah. So it could have been a whole lot worse. Mm -hmm. It could have been. But (laughs) this brings a lot of points to light. (laughs) <laughs> Let me count the ways. Yes. So as with everything, we want to learn, especially learning from other people's problems. <laughs> it's, it's a whole lot uh, mm-hmm. more manageable than learning from your own. Yes. Even though for some reason, learning from your own seems to stick around. <laughs> 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 so let's talk about some of the things that this case brings to the light and kind of give some reminders for everyone to think about because... You know, it's more than looking at your backup and, you know, especially when you're planning for these incidents, oftentimes people don't understand where to look and what to do uh, what to for think things. About. Yeah, what to think about. So let's take a look at five points you put together on that. And we talked about this, this first one as it was happening, which is a communications plan <laughs> because Facebook became part of the communications plan that was not planned <laughs> to be com- used, I'm sure, because you had staff communicating back and forth with each other, staff communicating with the patients. It's funny because you you see in the initial first day or two of it, you kind of see all that happening, and then you see it stop. So you know somebody stepped in and was like, no more of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, DM me your details. First, what are your details was happening. Then DM me your details because somebody said, oh, we shouldn't put that in public. And then that was just completely gone. Call this number. <laughs> yeah. So they, they learned as they went on, on some of the communication stuff, apparently. But, and they um, may have had a plan. The problem was everybody didn't understand the plan if it existed. Yeah, and that's common where a core set of people, maybe the instant response team, they know what to do, but all the other people don't really know what's going on. And so when all the crap's hit the fan, <laughs> you know, as I often say, you don't rise to the occasion, you fall to your level of preparation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that. So it was obvious they needed that. So Let's just say that you need to make sure you can communicate, you know, staff, partners, and patients, your business partners, all of that. You want everyone to know how that communication is going to happen. But then you also have to have a plan for external contacts like law enforcement and news because there were several cases where the news stations were reporting, we've received the email that was sent to the employees. Well, you know, if you're going to send an email to employees, it's going to go to the press. It's going to go. Yeah. So why not make it not look like you're hiding something, right? <laughs> so you have a plan to talk to the press about it as well as the employees. You put a, like a PS, if you're the press, please destroy. <laughs> and then we have to have a plan to treat patients without access to any systems. And you know, the average was 10 days. I think that number keeps growing Mm -hmm. of how long you need to plan to be. You need to plan to completely be without technology of any significance for two weeks. That's rough. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you need to plan that with all the people that normally manage how you would work busy dealing with the reason that you can't get to anything. So mm-hmm. you're not going to have those resources either. Right. That step up thing has to happen. <laughs> no. But you have to plan for someone to step up. That's right. All right. This next one, near and dear to my heart. Yeah, it's your fave. It is. So do not assume that all your PHI is in your EHR. <sighs> now, <laughs> as I hear Donna going, <laughs> there um, seems to be a couple of misconceptions that we run into often as we're doing our paid jobs. <laughs> mm-hmm. The first misconception is all of our patient information 
is within our EHR. There is nothing else that is PHI outside of our EHR. Okay. Eh. Wrong. <laughs> wrong. What was that episode where you just kept going wrong? <laughs> wrong. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this the deal with scripts, 147,000 patients were part of that breach, and none of that information came out of the EHR. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. <laughs> Point number two. <laughs> Uh, I love it when I hear things like we have a spreadsheet that has patients names and email addresses and phone numbers, but we don't have PHI. (laughs) (laughs) And I just have to say, you don't understand what PHI is. If that's what you think, Uh, because that is one of the 18 identifiers of PHI. And if you don't know what those are, Visit our website. I think we have them in there somewhere. <laughs> well, you better put them there now, buddy. Yeah. Uh, Donald will put them on this uh, on the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it is important to note just, you know, a element. Like if all I had was medical record number, I just had a number floating around. That is an element, but I can't identify that. I can't tie that to an individual and to health information. But if I have a spreadsheet that comes from, (laughs) that all the metadata says it came from Scripps Health, and it has all these names that say patient name, (laughs) Mm -hmm. it is now officially PHI. Even if it just has, this is uh, Scripps Health, Health, and here's the email address. I can tie that to an individual and it's now PHI. Well, I think where some of the misconception comes in is they don't know what the acronym stands for. Mm-hmm. Some people think it's patient health information. Mm-hmm. And, and so because they think it's patient health information, when it's not patient health information, <laughs> then it confuses them. But it's not. PHI is protected health information. Mm-hmm. And uh, as we said, there are 18 identifiers as to what information constitutes protected health information. So you should know that. To clarify, they don't say that's what constitutes it. They say if you took all of these out, then it wouldn't be PHI. Yep. Right. So they don't say these are. They just say without these, it's not. Right. And what's number 18? (laughs) Everything else. (laughs) (laughs) Any other identifying piece of information. (laughs) Yeah. So it's a good idea to post these you know, where people can understand them and go over them. I mean, some of them are obvious things. Other ones, you're going to look at it and go, what? Really? (laughs) Their IP address? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's the VIN of the car. Yeah. So there's some stuff in there. Yeah. But, but understand what that is. The other part too, is I think oftentimes you're using a cloud-based EHR. You think all of your stuff's going in there, but what you don't realize is that your staff, is pulling reports down and they're pulling uh, PDF files that's got patient information in there and and they're pulling all this down and they're putting it in all these areas. I mean, it's all Have over you the place. In downloads. Have you looked in Windows Temp? Have you looked in the cache and temp of your browsers? Have you? You know, there's yeah. It's like you say that anybody that tells you that oh, there's none, but mm-hmm. they've never gone to look. You know, you're going to find it. Oh, it's I've never yet found a time when I did not find it when they said it's only in the HR and I always so far (laughs) always find it somewhere else. Right. (laughs) If they've never, the only reason they'll say that is they've never gone to look. Yeah. Well, the one I love the most is when I said, do you ever take PHI off premises? And they're like, no, we don't never do that. And then this other lady in the back room goes, well, I do work from home sometimes. Okay, you do that remotely? No, I just copy everything to this USB drive in my pocketbook. <laughs> oh gosh! You can see you see everybody in the room going, "We didn't know that." <laughs> so I'm like, "That's not good. It's not good yeah. at all." You always know where that's going to go. Yeah. Or uh, there's another one where a practice manager called me one day and she says, "I'm going to kill my doctor." I'm like, "What?" He has a whole bunch of patient information in record format or in paper format. He decides he's going to take them home and destroy them. 
but they've been in his car for a week. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, that's not good. No. <laughs> so, uh, you know, not not a breach, but wow, talking about risky. <laughs> well, you make sure it's not a convertible. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, how many times have we read that report where, yeah. you know, uh, paper files were stolen out of a car or mm. out of a dumpster? <laughs> Can you steal from a dumpster? <laughs> <laughs> it's not stealing, I guess, when you're taking the trash. I guess not. Yeah. All right. So I think we covered that one enough. If you have any questions, let us know. Yeah. Well, All and right. notifying patients is the next piece. Because yeah. remember we were reading that day and everybody's like, why aren't they telling us? They're supposed to tell us. Yeah. No, they, <laughs> they're not supposed to tell you, but. They need to understand that's what the patients are asking. Mm-hmm. You need to understand that that's what they're going to be asking. So don't drag out the need to notify as soon as they knew they've started notifying. But also the perception of patients is you should tell me right away, mm-hmm. which that tells you multiple things about the people that wait until the 59th day. <laughs> but also it is know that they're going to be asking that. So have that in your communication plan that you are evaluating. And that as soon as you identify specific patient details that were released that may have been uh, breached, then you will start notifying. Yeah. Yeah. We saw people posting on Facebook. It's been two weeks and I haven't got anything in the mail yet. (laughs) Notifying (laughs) me. And I'm like, like, they're still not up and running. They haven't even been able to figure that out. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But, you know, people don't know that. And so that's one of those balancing acts between transparency and and not telling everybody every single thing that's happening. Because, Mm -hmm. you know, there are some confidential things that that go on that you don't want to post publicly. Right. And so we're not saying do that. What we're saying is make an attempt to explain the big picture. Yeah. So that I guess set set the expectations. Yeah. There you go. Set some expectations. Yeah. So anyway, they they need to be prepared to be, even though you have the downtime of two weeks, 10 days, whatever you should plan for, at least 10, you have that downtime, but then recovery weeks, even months, Mm -hmm. you know, six months from now, they'll still be trying to figure out some stuff. So you need to be understanding in your plan that it won't be like waving a magic wand. Yeah. And then we got news yesterday, (laughs) bless their hearts, just bless their hearts. Is this the new COO? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I know. Bless their hearts. (laughs) Yeah. Somebody takes the job at uh, the Central Florida, University of Florida, Central Florida hospitals. There's a couple of them. And the new COO takes over the village's hospital as the ransomware attack is hitting, like the next day or the day of, it's like, welcome to your new job. Here, better cover your hair. It'll be on fire in a minute. <laughs> I, know. It's, I mean, I I don't know. I don't know what I would do. I think part of me would be like, uh, I'll start next week. <laughs> yeah, cl- clearly, I did not think this through. I'm sorry, I forgot about another engagement. So yeah, I'm sick. <coughs> yeah. I can't and, come in. <laughs> I mean, so yeah, you, you're walking tough. in, you're walking in, you're the, the chief operational officer and you've not been part of the culture. You've not been part of the instant response training, you know, nothing. And all of a sudden everybody's running around and ransomware attack, ransomware attack. You got to assume that from this point forward though, cybersecurity and, and, preparation and planning will be a primary objective of the COO. Yeah. 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 That will make an impression. Yeah. Day one, literally. So, oh, I bless their hearts though, because they're going to learn it the way, you know, they should see if somebody at Scripps can take 10 minutes to tell them, if you knew now, (laughs) then what you know now. Because I am never one to say, well, let's don't ask, you know, ask somebody that's been there. Yeah. So we'll have to watch that one, see how it goes. But man, I just got to say one more time, bless her heart. The lady Mm. that took that job, bless her heart. Yeah. We should get her on the podcast (laughs) after this is over. She don't have time right now. 
Yeah, it'll probably be next year before she would be willing. <laughs> and then, of course, there was another right of access settlement agreement. Yep. Resolution agreement done with the Diabetes Endocrinology and Lipidology Center as a West Virginia practice. The 19th, 19th right of access, that that's a lot. And that's mm-hmm. just since September 2019. So that's a lot, yep. but I thought that uh, the well, I mean, the story they give us, you know, in the press release and the resolution agreement is in August 2019, a complaint comes in from a patient who had requested the records of her son in July 2019, minor child, uh, not the adult son, <laughs> and um. So the net of it is, then October, they opened an investigation, and the bottom line is, until May 2021, so nearly two years, Mm -hmm. when they did this resolution agreement is when the patient finally got, or the the, uh, mother finally got her son's records. So, Robin Sue's quote. (laughs) And I agree. Yeah, <laughs> it's, her quote. It's trying ready? to bring it home. You ready? Go. <laughs> it should not take a federal investigation before a HIPAA covering entity provides a, pa- a parent with access to their child's medical records. <laughs> covered entities owe it to their patients to provide timely access to medical records. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. So we talk. You know, one of the jokes we always say down here is it takes an act of Congress. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Apparently, for some things, it takes a federal investigation <laughs> to get True things that. moving. <laughs> here's, here's the interesting part. Maybe you can help me understand this. If the investigation started October 2019, why did it still take them until May of 2021 to do to give them the records? I would think that if I got some type of notification of an investigation, I'd be like throwing out information everywhere. Yes, you would think. So I I, I don't I understand that, that. Yeah, one of the things that is on these cases, they don't give us the details, and a lot of that. Probably to prevent us from figuring out who patients are, which is, you know, a tricky thing. So we don't get mm-hmm. a lot of those details. Knowing how the investigations work, I still don't understand why it took that long or what the problem was. You know, the $5,000 payment, again, they're not trying to get the money. It's the two-year cap, and it's pretty standard. Mm-hmm. But I really would, I would like to get more example information to understand in, instead of in general, timeliness. Okay, well, we get it that it's timeliness issues, but why? What mm. was causing the timeliness issue? So that I can make sure we don't have those. Yeah. I would love to get that information. You know, David, make Especially sure. Especially there's an investigation and yeah. there's so much time between. Because I'm assuming if the investigation started in October, that somewhere not long after that, the practice should have been probably notified. Well, and they probably gave him a break during COVID. The practice was notified in October. So they tell you when they notified the practice and they gave them a request for information, standard 10 business days, give me a response, whatever happened. And that would have then brought them right into the beginning of COVID. Okay. I I get, I get the COVID thing, but May 2020. Well, I know. I (laughs) know. The OCR wasn't able to push them, but why the practice didn't take care of the problem. And that's what I want to understand is did, did they just have this attitude? It's ours, not theirs. Or did they have the, we can't find it or, Mm -hmm. you know, what was the delay? That's what I want to understand. Yeah. Yeah, That's what we don't, we don't know that. Yeah. So that, that's what I wish we understood more about how the timeliness became the issue. What was the root of the problem? Timeliness is obvious. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we got to get moving if we're going to talk about maturity model matters. (laughs) All right. Throw your last one in there. Uh Oh, gosh. (laughs) This is just because it was like I was doing my uh, research and there was a new SCOTUS ruling about the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act and how it's applied in cases and... Uh, you know, 
I'm a nerd. I have to read these things. Plus, it it does sometimes impact other things. But the point it was making is that if someone is misusing or abusing their access that they are given for their job, it doesn't fall under this particular statute. That's all it's saying. It doesn't say that abuse of privilege is not a problem. It just says that it doesn't fall under this statute. And so I was studying the discussions of it, and sure enough, it wasn't long before somebody wanted to bring HIPAA into it. In fact, I was just about to say, hi, I'm surprised, and then (sighs) I saw this. (laughs) And and they hashtagged it. How does this apply to hashtag (laughs) HIPAA? And then the good news is somebody knows the answer. So they reply, hippopapa violations are their own crimes and have their own fines and consequences. Thank you for the hippopapa knowledge. It just, at that point, I had to quit reading. It's so frustrating for the answers. Anyway, you hashtag it, hippopapa. <laughs> When somebody says they can't find our podcast, I say it's 1P. And everybody goes, oh, yeah. Who have to buy Help Me With Hip Hop Hop <laughs> Only to say, have a page that says, it is not Hip Hop 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 You misspelled it. Click here to redirect to the correct <laughs> spelling. <laughs> uh, and people be like, it's just a typo. Oh, I get that if it's one time, but you're hashtagging it and responding. <laughs> no. And if you send me an email and you mention it four times, it's not a typo. I'm just saying. I, anyway. I'm making it. I'm making a note right now to buy that domain. <laughs> All the misspellings. Yeah. Which honestly, we may have already bought it. We just hadn't done anything with it. <laughs> I'm bad about buying domains. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You're like, oh yeah, I got that domain. Really? Well, when I we got- started the podcast, you said, "How about we call it Help Me With Hip?" I already have that domain. Okay. That that's how we got our name, people. He <laughs> bought the domain in advance, and it was just one he already had. So, <laughs> all righty, okay. get into the meat and taters. <laughs> meat and taters. <laughs> all right, tater. mature- <laughs> 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 let's talk about the maturity model, which we obviously follow. The last time we talked about this was like a hundred episodes ago. Well, not yeah. the last time, but when we first started talking about it. So, yeah, when we uh, looked at there's maturity assessments of, you know, how things are working and your training program and understanding how effective it is, and then your HIPAA program maturity. We those were episodes two oh six and two twenty two way back in twenty nineteen. Mm-hmm. I know, and you know, this stuff's starting to age us more. <laughs> but uh, this year and the next coming years, uh, there's a lot of conversations and we're uh, going to try to help people who, uh, you know, it's like you never know when stuff's going to come up in a conversation and we want our listeners to be able to go, well, that's blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another acronym you got to remember. Yeah. CMMC. 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 You'll hear people say CMMC. Yeah, which is tough for us because around here, one of the hospital systems is CMC. <laughs> oh, so just the C M M C. So instead of the hip hop pa issue, yeah. you have the M M M issue. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So, <laughs> but what's happening is the Department of Defense has long had these requirements for their contractors to meet certain guidelines, and and those had been being uh, gently applied. To require them to say, yes, we do FedRAMP, or we do this, or we do that. And now they have uh, come out with, this has been developed and, and proposed in 2019, came out in 2020, now they're going to start implementing it. And it's the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification, CMMC. And you can look it up and learn a lot about it, but there's... A bazillion articles about it. I added a link to the one I found that I thought was most helpful from a basic perspective, which is on the CSO, CISO online link, where it explains what defense contractors need to know because this is 
about defense contractors, which might make you say, why are you talking about that on a HIPAA show? Mm-hmm. Because we help you everything. No, <laughs> just... Dot <laughs> com. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the thing is, is that everyone is going to be talking about this, mostly because, remember, this was proposed before solar winds, before ransomware has gotten so bad, before all of these things. And everybody's now really saying, how do we make cybersecurity in the supply chain a more important issue in order for you to work with us? It does have some really interesting things. And the concept is, you know, there's tons of maturity models that have been out there all along. Going back to like early 2000s, people started talking about defining maturity models. And everybody keeps adding their own little twist to it. We need to standardize. That's why you're going to hear CMMC brought up because it does cover the defense industry. And everybody's like, well, it, you know, they kind of need security. So you have to be certified by a certifying body, which doesn't, it, 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 you can't even become a certified certifier yet classes don't start until the fall but the the whole concept is there are five levels of maturity maturity level one they call basic maturity and then it goes all the way up to yeah you can trust us with all the really super secret stuff at level five ufos yeah <laughs> ufos <laughs> UFOs, UFOs, UFOs. But the important part is that they call level one basic cyber hygiene. Wait, we just talked about what is cyber hygiene, mm-hmm. right? So they're, they're tying it into what everybody's talking about on the hygiene concepts. And then level two is intermediate cyber hygiene. Level three is good cyber hygiene. Those are the, the, the big ones, right, that you can get to. And right now they're looking for rolling it out and expecting people to meet level one. So this year, fiscal year 2021, they plan on having 15 contractors that they make meet level one. Next year, they'll be 75 and they'll want them to meet level three. And then They'll bring in 250, then 325, all the way up to fiscal year 2025, where they say 475 contractors will be selected to meet these requirements in the rollout. And then, of course, then after that, it's 30,000 vendors. So you would think it was as big as healthcare, but it doesn't even scratch the surface as far as the vendors and the the breadth of the healthcare world. Mm -hmm. But these, uh, Concepts that they have, and and I'd like a lot of it points to a NIST guide eight hundred dash one seventy one, but to reach these maturity levels, you have to do eight hundred dash one seventy one plus more on each of the maturity levels, and they identify in level one there are seventeen cybersecurity practices that you would have to show that you're meeting, and that means. You got to prove it. <laughs> and uh, level two, there's 72 practices. When you get to three through five, you got 130, 156, and 171. Wow. So I'm going to point out what might be obvious to most of us, but not everyone, is that to do HIPAA, you've got to be at least level three. Mm. Would be my guess, right? Uh, I mean, you can't say I have intermediate hygiene. Yeah, I mean, we talk about HIPAA's the floor, right? Yeah, yeah. And so this kind of this is the starting point. Well, with CMMC, they're 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 going, hey, we're going to start you even lower than that. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like us in the boot camp where we go, okay, HIPAA's got one P. Let's start there. <laughs> <laughs> If you know how to spell HIPAA, you don't know HIPAA, you know how to spell HIPAA. That's that's one. We, we, we want to be clear. <laughs> the first indicator that we shouldn't believe what you're telling us is that you don't know how to spell it. But yeah, I, I agree with you. The HIPAA would be would be three. You know, and, and we often tell people that again, if you want it to be good, 
then that's fine. But you really want to strive for a whole lot more than good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think that the prescription, as you would say, for HIPAA, I mean, level one wouldn't even meet the bare minimum HIPAA requirements is my guess. Level mm-hmm. two, when you read through this, and granted, there's not been any kind of true cross-reference so that you could match it up uh, because it is looking at things differently. I see it as level two would meet your bare minimums of HIPAA. Mm-hmm. Level three would mean you're actually doing what you're supposed to do. And that's where I would tell uh, you know everybody they need to go. But uh, I thought it was interesting in the assessment guide for level one, where they give you the list of things that you're supposed to make sure you're doing for level one. Mm-hmm. For all those people who say, oh, I'm a small business. I can't do this. And and I have had more recently conversations outside of HIPAA with companies like, you're telling me that I need to like make sure we have computers that are up to date. I, I don't have time for that. I understand that you don't have time for that. But if you want to have security, you're going to have to find the time. It's mm-hmm. the way of the world. And it's like shocking to these people. So you think it's hard to get healthcare people to do it. You should try talking to somebody that does market research, which I just did. Anyway, the text says, the CMC, see, I'm already having problems. (laughs) The CMMC assessment methodology follows a data-centric security process that applies the practices equally regardless of the contractor's size, constraints, or complexity. All CMMC levels are achievable by small, medium, and large contractors. Mm. Well, bam. Mic drop. (laughs) All you got to do is just take CMMC out and put in HIPAA. There you go. (laughs) You know, and and again, you know, HICCUP, same concept, that Mm. the small, medium, large, and uh, there's a new, the the SIS-20, there's a new one that's come out, the version 8, and they now have implementation groups. So you've got level 1, 2, and 3, even with those now. So we're going we're gonna to see this uh, transition. Mm-hmm. And in healthcare, which is, you know, how we need to tie this all back together, um, last fall, HC3 which is who 405D operates under, healthcare, cybersecurity, something, cyber, I don't remember, and control, I, HC3, we'll have a link to it. <laughs> There's too much in my brain. But they did a presentation on using some version of maturity models for healthcare to HHS. And, you know, there's no doubt it makes sense the NIST CSF, it does have implementation tiers. Uh, I don't necessarily, they're, they're a lot more gray than what the CMMC says. Are you doing this? Yes or no? Not, do you have policies? <laughs> mm-hmm. Whole different world. And, you know, Cardin, our assessments have been doing this for years. But it's, of course, a formula that I made up in my own way of taking information from multiple sources, tying it back together and saying, okay, what qualifies as level zero, one, two, like that, same concepts, you know, and you start with chaos. We have a chaotic approach to cybersecurity. (laughs) (laughs) But it goes back to our risk analysis where we say, what's your plan? Now, how are you doing on that plan? Hello, that's the maturity model concept, is it not? Mm -hmm. One would think. So our model expects you to be, everything should be at level three or higher. Same concept, the middle level or higher. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in the most basic sense, our, my method was for every plan that you have, you need to have documentation, training, and an incident response plan. Even to say, these are things we're not going to worry about. Mm -hmm. but if it happens, use this plan. And everything that's a high risk, you should be mature with. So I I, I don't know about your thoughts, because I know you and I 
haven't even had a chance to talk CMMC until you read this today. <laughs> <laughs> what are yeah, your thoughts? I, I mean, I think it's great. And I think that um, even though it's, you know, something that's outside of the, uh, the HIPAA healthcare sector, I do, I do think we can implement this. Uh, it's, it's the same thing that we do with some of the other things. We, we look outside of what healthcare is doing to, to try to figure out what's working in other areas. And can we include that in what we're trying to do? Yeah. I think this is going to help that. That's it's one of the things that we've kind of missed. We've gotten to the point where we, we started breaking things down into small, medium, and large, which, you know, that's one of the things that we complained about for years is, you know, people are saying I'm too small or what am I supposed to do? What am I not supposed to do? And then you got, you know, you kind of got the re- reverse side. You got the big companies are going, well, you know, <laughs> what are we supposed to be doing? Because <laughs> we're big. Yeah, so we're we got too that, big to do that. <laughs> yeah, so we got that part figured out to to a degree. I think we still have some people coming in and are trying to push these little small medical practices into doing some crazy stuff on the technology side and putting in, you know, they got three workstations and are putting a server because somebody said, you can't be HIPAA compliant if you're not having an Active Directory server. <clears throat> Rap fire tools. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> Salesperson. <laughs> yeah. Somebody trying to sell something to you. But you know, now we're going further than that to say not only are we are we breaking it down by small, medium, and large, but let's look at how you can attain obtain certain levels of that. You know, you're starting with step one, step two, step three, and and you're going from there. And it's it's doing the whole thing that we talked about years ago, which is how do you do HIPAA? How do you eat an elephant? Yeah, one step at a time. Mm-hmm. And that's what they're doing is they're putting these steps in so that people can cannot look at, oh, my God, we got to be at level five. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, they're like, just, just get to level one, okay? Yeah. Don't – I mean, I don't know about you, but when I was younger, I would see how far I could, like, jump up to the step, you know? Can I jump from the bottom to step four, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And sometimes you could, and sometimes you'd face plant. <laughs> I was going to say, how many times you face plant? <laughs> but that's not the way it's made. The steps aren't made to, to be approached that way. They're nope. made to be approached step one, step two, step three, and then eventually you get to where you're going. <laughs> and that's what this is doing. <laughs> Indeed. So I, I see it as it's the way, well, again, I've been doing it this way for years. Not this way, but the concept mm-hmm. for years because I believe this is where we need to go. It's how we can tell what we're really doing. And obviously, we're going to be in incorporating more and more of these kinds of things that are coming out is as soon as I find an appropriate method for applying those concepts to what we do. But again, we're not the people that you go to if you want to check the box and welcome to the lobby. Uh, yeah. HIPAA compliance. <laughs> yeah, you're not even you're not even in uh, the first floor. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think this also may help solve the problem. Don't know. Only time will tell. But you know how people often skip steps in HIPAA. They, oh like, yeah. We I, we have a we have a HIPAA program. We follow HIPAA, and then you just and then you say, "Where's your risk assessment?" And they're like, "Oh, we haven't done a risk assessment." I'm like, oh, "That's step one." How do you, <laughs> How well, are we you telling the policies me? and procedures? That's exactly. all you need to do. Because they, they did what I did as a kid and they jumped from the ground to step three. <laughs> you skipped one and two. You can't do that. <laughs> it's not how this works. No. Right. And so oftentimes that's what I find. Yes, we have a HIPAA program and here's our policies and procedures. Blah. And then oh, where's your risk management plan? I don't have that either. What? <laughs> where's the nearest wall? That I can beat my head on. <laughs> yeah, I agree, and and I think that uh, you know uh, I know that where we're at right now in uh, the four OD task group is trying to get the, uh, four or five D. God, this always the, happens at the end. But you the WD forty the WD forty task group WD forty. <laughs> <laughs> we need a new name that everybody can remember. So uh, the work that we're doing now is finalizing all the updates that need to be made 
to the original documents to include a lot of new things. I mean, those came out in 2018. They were, you know, started in 2017. So there's a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, once those roll, I think, you know, we've talked a lot about what our next steps are going to be. And based on some of the things that, you know, we, we see happening elsewhere between the executive order and this coming from the DOD, we're going to see more and more companies, regardless of their industry, needing to do these kinds of things. And just as I told other people, Hiccup is good. It, it is a great place for somebody to start. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to do Sys20, do Hiccup. Because yep. it, it, it's, it's that starting place that will get you to that level one. Mm -hmm. And by the time you've done those, then we're able to go, okay, let's check your maturity. Right. Yeah, the, the hardest part that we see with anything in compliance is just getting started. Mm -hmm. That's just the hardest piece. And you know, again, there's multiple reasons. Is people people are like, I don't know where to start, or this is overwhelming <laughs> because you know they pull out the 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 five thousand page manual of how they need to do this. <laughs> I know. That's why we do everything. We break it down. We break it down into little pieces on purpose. And everybody's like, it's taking so long. Well, you do not want me to give you everything at once because that will never get done. Yeah. Just do well, what I give you, and then I'll give you more. I love it when people say, how long do you think it'll take me to get compliant? <laughs> and I always do the air quotes. And I, I laugh because I'm like, let's just get to step one first. <laughs> it's, it's not a destination. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not, not it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it yeah. doesn't work quite like that. But it's if an I told operational you it's gonna, standard. Yeah. If I told you it's going to be two or three years, you'd be like, I ain't doing that. <laughs> Yeah, let's just do this one thing at a time. Yep. All right, so I'm looking forward to getting to spend more time with this and see where it's going, but clearly we've got a few other things to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to go in another episode, and we'll we'll get into this. But for now, at least our listeners are in the loop Yep. when it comes to this. And... Uh, as it comes up, you uh, can at least speak to it if anyone asks you about it. But yeah, I know what CMMC is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm all that thing, over that. It's that thing that somebody put together. Yeah. Quick, go <laughs> listen to the episode that you just read the title to and listen to the first bits. Yep. There you go. And uh, as, a, as a party note, HC3, uh, Health Sector Cybersecurity Coordination Center. There you go. <laughs> 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 All right, that is our show for today, folks. Thanks for listening. Please share this out on your favorite social media site. Remember to rate our podcast. Give us a review. We love the reviews. <laughs> we always need your help spreading the word. And remember, for Donna and myself, the HIPAA is not about compliance. It's about patient care. You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims. The show created to help you with HIPAA. For more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.